Hey, Steve here, and today I'm going to show you a step that you can add to the regular high pass sharpening Photoshop technique that will banish those horrible sharpening halos forever. Now, if you've ever struggled to get your images to look super sharp, but without looking crunchy and over sharpened, then in fact, no matter which sharpening technique you actually use, whether it's the high pass filter or something else, then this technique will help. If you're new to my channel and you want to see more videos like this, then remember to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you like this video, then just give it a thumbs up too. And if you'd like to see how I organize all the seemingly random editing techniques that I've learned and taught over the years into a cohesive and structured editing workflow, then just click the link in the description below this video to download my free workflow guide. So before we actually run through the technique, let me just zoom in on this rock here in the middle of the frame. This is what we're going to be concentrating on. Uh, as we can see here, there's a lot of potential uh, detail that we can really bring out and make look super sharp. So the, the first step, if you're not familiar, I'll just run through, it's quite simple. The, um, the high pass filter sharpening technique involves basically duplicating your layer. Uh, I'm working on just a single layer here because I've merged, for the purpose of this demo, I've merged the layers all into one. So I can just easily duplicate the background there. If uh, if you've got all your layers intact, um, then you'll need to just go uh, edit, sorry, no, select all, and then edit, copy merged, and then edit paste. And that will basically just paste a new layer on top of all your other layers that are essentially a, uh, a merged version of your entire image. So. Anyway, this is the sharpening layer that we're going to be applying the effect to. Let's now go filter, other, and high pass. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to over exaggerate the effect just because I think that it's, uh, it's pretty difficult. Unless you're looking at this video at full screen on a very large monitor, you might not see the, uh, the difference between the various sharpening um, you know, when I turn it on and off and compare the before and after. So I'm going to over sharpen on purpose. I'm going to use a radius here of 4.5 pixels. I wouldn't usually go that high, but as you'll see, the technique that I'm going to show you uh, is actually going to make it okay to use a radius this high anyway. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's why I'm going as high as 4.5 on the radius here. Let me click OK. And we can already see this kind of weird gray layer now that's a result of that high pass filter. We can see the edge, particularly over here where we've got the, the brighter water uh, up against the dark rock. That's where halos are more likely to be apparent. Uh, and we can see that in the high pass layer here. However, with that said, there are also other sort of micro halos that are going to be all over the image um, that aren't necessarily as easy to see. And that's what is going to cause the image to look over sharpened and crunchy. Uh, so to convert this into a sharpening layer, all we do is change the blend mode to overlay. And there we go. Here's the before and here's after. So this does look very over sharpened right now. And if I zoom in even further and just have a look at this edge over here again, we can see the halo that's been introduced. So you, you can see there's like a bright edge that's gone out beyond the, uh, the rock there and into the water. So there's that bright edge that's been introduced by this sharpening effect. So how we get rid of that is, uh, is quite simple. We go to the channels panel. If your channels panel isn't next to your layers panel over here, then you can just go to uh, window and then channels in the Photoshop menu. We're going to hold on a Mac, that's command on the keyboard or on a PC that would be control. We'll hold that and click once on the RGB channel. Come back into layers and then make sure we've got our sharpening layer uh, selected. And then we're going to click the new layer mask icon down here. And that is going to load a luminosity selection into a layer mask for this uh, sharpening layer. However, it's currently the inverse of what we want. So if we just have a look at the mask, I'm going to press uh, Alt or Option and then click on the mask. 
and that loads the mask into view. What this is actually doing is masking out the shadows and keeping the highlights. But what we actually want to do is mask out the highlights and keep the shadows. So to do that, all we need to do is uh, invert the layer mask by pressing Command or Control and I on the keyboard. And that flips it around so that all the dark parts of this uh, image are now white. And the parts that are going to be masked out are the gray and black areas. So if we just look back over here, we can see the edge around here where that halo was. Now in the mask, we've actually got a dark halo. And what that's going to do, it's going to mask this sharpening layer out um, more strongly. So it's going to remove it more from that halo specifically than from the, the water over here, which is uh, slightly less dark in the mask. So what that looks like now, if we just come back to the actual layer itself and toggle this off and on, you can see that halo is greatly reduced. Now, if we just disable this uh, mask again, we can see the difference. So this is the sharpening layer with the layer mask, and this is without. So just watch that halo pop in and out of view as I toggle this off and on. Now, the thing is, the sharpening effect is still, uh, is still there in the shadows of this image. And for one reason or another, that is actually what's going to give us the you know, we're still going to get a big benefit from the sharpening layer by still having it in the shadows and removing it from the highlights. So when we toggle this layer off and on with the whole rock in full view, we can see there that's a nice pop of sharpness and it doesn't look over sharpened or crunchy and all those halos around the edges and all those ones that we can't necessarily detect that are causing the image to go uh, to look crunchy and over sharpened, they are no longer an issue. So here's, yeah, I'm just toggling the before and after of this effect um, on and off here. Now let me just show you the difference while looking at the whole rock. Uh, if we disable the mask itself, so here's without the layer mask, and here's with. So basically we're just masking it out of those brightest highlights because that's where things start to look too crunchy and over sharpened. Whereas in the shadows, you can apply this effect a lot more strongly and it's all good. So let me just zoom out. And if we can see here, looking at this from a bit more of a distant view, that now looks really nice, clean and sharp. Um, so yeah, if you're on full screen, hopefully you can see that thing too. And that really is it in a nutshell. The um, you know, What we're actually doing here is using a luminosity mask. If you're not familiar with luminosity masking, um, then you know what we did in the RGB channel over here by loading it as a selection and then loading that into the layer mask. Um, you know, if this is the first time you've done something like this, then congrats, you've just created your first luminosity mask. Um, and you know, there is a lot more that we can get into to further refine the mask itself if um, you know if this first um, iteration hasn't quite reduced the halos by enough uh, but that's probably beyond the scope of this video I've got some more um, videos on my channel about luminosity masking if you want to sort of dive a bit deeper into uh, into how to refine your luminosity masks um, but this basically in a nutshell is the technique so uh, yeah I hope you found this video useful and remember to hit subscribe on my uh, channel if you want to see more videos like this. And uh, yeah, I hope you do. And I hope to see you next time. Cheers.